right? Coolant flange, this is the one that goes on the side of the head. This is a common problem you're going to have with most coolant flanges on VWs. Now, this is from Heritage, VW Heritage. It's probably not their fault, but this O-ring is the wrong O-ring. So, for starters, pull the O-ring out. There we go. Right. That O-ring is the wrong size for that recess. So what we've got, if I take it back out again, I'll measure it. So recess wise, we've got about three and a half mil. So that's about three and a half mil. And the O-ring, that looks like a two mil O-ring. So you've got a two mil O-ring outside diameter and a three and a half mil gap. They clearly don't work. So when you put that in there, you've got too much space in that the recess for the O-ring to squeeze out so that it's not going to seal against the head. And what you can have, whether that will zoom in or not, I don't know if it will. Literally, if you get a flat surface on there, I'm putting literally zero effort into pushing that rule on there and it's making that recess and that touch and the seal's not doing anything. So what you need to do, if you're getting a new thing, and getting a new flange, this counts for all, and the one on the front of the head and the one that goes on the bottom of the water pump, don't fit it with that seal unless it fits tight. You want an O-ring that fits in that cavity, touches the sides on it, and, and protrudes slightly higher than that. It won't zoom, it's quite here, but so what I'll do, I'll get another O-ring, and then show you how that fits inside there. I'll take photos of it so you can see what the problem is. Right, so as you can see, that's the best seal I've got. There is a tiny gap there, nowhere near as big as the other one. But the main important side of it is how high that seal sits above there. So when you bolt that onto the head, you've actually got the O-ring is still going to actually be in contact to actually seal. Um, so once the flange is actually tight on the head, the O-ring is still going to be doing its job and sealing. Whereas that little one, by the time you'd have um, tightened that flange down on the head, yeah, so by the time you'd have tightened that flange on the head, that O-ring wouldn't have, have had enough pressure on it to actually do its job of sealing. So that's one thing I always do is just double check the seals. So uh, get that bolted on and that'll be that done. Well, there we go, that's the uh, replacement plug. Where is it? There it is. Changed over for the warm-up regulator. Um, supplied that from Brendan Moss again. So simple soldering. What is best practice is to stagger your joins. Because if you do two joins together, um, when you wrap it or it goes under, you've got quite a lump in the middle and then that can end up um, chafing and causing stuff. So when it's together, nice sort of space and that's good. So that'll get wrapped up. So that's another thing done. So a bit more done. Slam panels back on. So We've managed to get this chassis leg, all the wire and loom has been tidied up um, as best it's going to be. So I've done everything on the head that side. Um, so all this wire and loom has been tidied up, wrapped up. So under there I've just got the headlight uh, wire and the battery harnesses, uh, pos and neg. Going down we've got radiator back in, the cowling back on, slam panel back on. Um, Bottom hoses on with the clips. Um, of the wiring for the two sensors on there, you've got diaphragm there, another air valve. Got that back down, that's all tied in. Um, yes, yeah, so it's starting to look more like a car now. Um, front end's on. A few more bits just doing and respraying the front brackets that hold the, um, the radiator in situ because they looked a bit crap. Um, they were black, but wasn't happy with it so. I'm going to redo those silver, make those tidied up. And then once I've done that, I'm going to set to work on most of the wiring in there because these look a bit dirty. That one, you can see the brown knit, that's got a bit of um, just rusty dirt on it. So clean all that up. Then it's on to, I need earth straps. So I've got to put an earth strap from, uh, where's the stud? That stud. 
goes onto one of the hinge bolts, but obviously those hinge bolts I need to um, paint Atlas Grey, so I'll just get a little touch-up pen for those. So once I'm happy where they are and they're tight as they're going to be, then I can just paint them over. I've got another air strap needs to go from one of those bolts and the coil to that point there. Um, I've still got to do um, an earth point on there. That then goes on the back of there. I can do that tight. Um, that's waiting for the hoses for that there. That's the hose that goes on there. Just waiting for a clip for it. And then I need to dig out the other hose, which should go on there up to the head tank. I think I've got that somewhere, so I'll reuse that if it's any good, which I think it is. Um, I need to buy a new fan because mine was absolutely shot. Um, the radiator is the original radiator. Um, you look at one of the other videos, I just pressure tested it. Could have bought a new radiator for like 50, 60 quid, but if there's nothing wrong with that one, why bin it? Um, so I just mocked up some stuff on the ends. Um, got used the air pressure on it, air compressor on it even. Got two bar in it. It held two bar for half hour, 40 minutes, whatever I left it on for, which is more than it's going to hold when it's under pressure. Um, so I'm more than happy with that. Again, if it does go wrong later down the line, it's not exactly expensive to change, but at this type point in time, I don't see the point in changing it for the sake of changing it. So that's that at the moment. One of the 616 valve engines does annoy me slightly is this pipe here. It normally, you see on most engines, just because it sits on the pipe, the in intake pipe there, it sort of sits off an angle like that. And it really <laughs> it sets my OCD off because it's not in line with um, the inlet manifold. So when I've that there, so I want that to sit nice and neat and tidy there. So hopefully I can jig stuff around and get it sitting nice and neat. Um, those brackets are for fuel injectors. So they're all done in. Um, I still need to rebuild the meter and head. But as I said, we're moving now. So that's all been packed up. That will be done when we get to the next place. Uh, I still need to get a vernier pulley for the engine. Then I can get it timed up. Uh, time back on there. All the covers can go back on. Air, air intake pipe joint can go back in. Um, yeah, there's lots of bits. Lots of bits we're getting on with, which is good. So it's coming together quite nicely. I cleaned up a lot of under under the air box. We'll put that back on and under there. Um, tighten these nuts down. Again, I'm just going to touch up those once they're on there. I need to get a touch-up pen and just go on that bit there and those bits again on that side there, which is scratched just where I put the um, slam panel on. Uh, slam panel lined up fine that side. That side wing, I had to push the wing out or put pressure on the wing to get the bolts lined up. So when the bonnet's closed, you've got nice little shut lines. So that's... Um, I'll just show you that now. Get me a little light out of the way. Hopefully you can still see it. So, doo -doo -doo. so once that's closed, you've got nice, beautiful shut lines all the way up there. And again, nice shut lines all the way up there. Hopefully this grill should go in a touch more than it is now. Um, but again, I haven't got the headlights in yet because... Where is it? There it is. Because the old ones were uh, completely shot, so they got they got um, no, they weren't actually tell a lie. They were the silly um, crystal clear ones. I say silly. I had those on uh, my other Mark II Golf, but these want to be OEM ones. Um, so I don't know whether to buy brand new ones or get used ones because I don't want to buy brand new ones. They look gleaming, and then these obviously are original, sort of faded. So I probably um. Get out of a second hand set, decent set, or not. I don't know, we'll come to that. But as long as it's a decent hello one, it should match and look good. It's looking good to have the grill back on there again. A few little touch up bits. Um, touch up list is getting bigger, but it is what it is. So we're coming along. Can't wait to get this, get it out in the daylight and have a good look at it. So, found some more bits to get up to. I thought I'd get on with the fuel lines. Um, get what I can done with those. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to replace them. There's no need to. There's no performance gain by buying the ones you can get off a shelf other than cosmetic, really. Um, so it's just going to be 
these are stainless steel anyway so all they'll need is a little bit of scotch bright or wire wool just to clean them up the ends as you can see pretty disgusting um more so on that end there's any surface rust nothing's pitted or corroded to the point it's unusable um so what i've done is started with number four cylinder um just giving that a nice uh clean off um and then that is a bit of primer on there all i'm using these are very handy pick them up from aldi or cheap things these are any cheap ones they're ideal for just sticking in a cordless gun and just using little bits of mobs at like that so I just gunned them off clean them up um, and then squirt a bit of primer so just using the um, high coat stuff which is from the range six quid a can good stuff so I use that then I'll just use some of the wheel paint silver that I've got and then again a bit of clear coat on there so all I'm going to just take the ends up a little bit not too much um, and then just put a very light dusting over it at the moment. And um, yeah, just a very light dusting to get that to really bond to it. You can find if you put a big thick coating on there, um, it doesn't dry as good and it doesn't get as good as bond because you've got too much paint um, trying to dry itself. So a little dusting on that and then I'll do the same. Another little dusting and that'll be a good thick coat once it's all dried solid and then a bit of paint and a bit of clear coat and that should be nice and tidy. There we go, that's one brake uh, break line, one fuel line done. As you can see, a bit of elbow grease, rub down, bit of primer, bit of paint, bit of lacquer. Goes a long way to making things look nice. Same with the other end. Nice and tidy. Um, I'm going to get some wire wool to clean the actual lines up. I'm not going to use any chemicals to clean them up because under there is just going to be um, some form of... Um, polyurethane plastic hose in there um, so I don't want to put any chemicals on it and risk degrading that plastic any time soon but it, it's not needed anyway there's only a bit of tiny dirt on there which will just brush off so what I'm going to do I'm going to get this one fitted on the car and then I've got clear coat to put on that one and then start cleaning this one up and that's uh, one fuel line in the first one number four cylinder so get some more light on that see that looks a hell of a lot better Put the clip on there that's the original one where it should sound which wasn't on the engine you've only got two that go on there you've got cylinder four and you've got cylinder three um two and one just go naturally out on their own um you've got two lines that come across the front there and there clip on there and then go down to the warm-up regulator so i'll get on with the rest of those i'll probably get this video edited stick it up um and then go from there so all we have got as well is Tied it up under there, it's a bit dusty, but the wiring we're looking at, that's all tucked in where it should be. I've just got to double check where the vacuum lines go. Um, I think one goes around there. There's another one that comes with a bulkhead to go on there. I can't remember. Um, so all the wiring has done this leg, probably re reiterating what I've said already. Um, don't know if you can see the wiring in there. Nope, you can't. There you go, can now. So. So this is the wiring loom. That's all I've done is just tidy it up. So you've got fog light, side light, headlight, um, not plugged in. Um, so that's that's all I've done both sides. So that's all in. Same detail that side. Again, plugs just tied up, cleaned up. So look what's smarter. So that's where we're at currently. So yeah, um, hopefully. Um, the company I work for has done very well this year, considering all things considering. Um, and we're actually getting a bonus this year, so fingers crossed. Nate, when the bonus comes through, I should be able to buy the track slag exhaust system and the vernier pulley because they're the last two sort of big expensive bits I need by the alternating power steering pump. But hopefully, that will happen and we can get those. But again, we are moving house, so what will be will be. But she's coming along, all the little bits and bobs are getting there slowly, which is good. Always moving forward. Cheers.